Lesson 7.6, we're going to be modeling the number of successes in a fixed number of trials. So some definitions here, binomial coefficients is the number of ways of picking R unordered outcomes from a set of n trials. So given n trials, how many different ways can R happen, whatever event R is? Um, so the way that that's calculated, there's something called Pascal's triangle, um, which you can look up and it shows all of the different coefficients. Um, this is n choose R. Okay, this is n choose r notation, which is calculated by n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial, where n factorial, this notation here, means multiply every single number n all the way down to 1. So let's say n was 5, it'd be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Your calculator has a factorial button. If you're using your graphing calculator, you go to mass and then probability number 4 is, pro is factorial. It also has an NCR button. Um, your n choose r button. So if you go to math, probability number three is your ncr. So an example of this would be how many different ways is there to flip a coin five times and record exactly two heads? So you're flipping it five times, and maybe the first and second one are heads, and then the next three are all tails, for example. So how many different possibilities for that? So in that case, n would be five because you have five trials, and r would be two because you want two outcomes. So you would have five factorial over two factorial times five minus two factorial which would be 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial. So then 5 factorial would mean 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, 2 factorial is 2 times 1, and 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So the 3 times 2 times 1 will actually cancel in the numerator and the denominator. So you end up with a 5 times 4, which is 20, divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. So there are 10 different ways you can flip a coin five times and record exactly two heads. You could have also used the NCR button in your graphing calculator. So one common distribution that uses this is the binomial distribution. I would pause the video and write down these notes first. So the binomial distribution is there's two outcomes, either a success or a failure. So it's an x denotes the discrete random variable equal to the number of successes in n independent trials. Um, so then the probability distribution would be the probability that x is equal to x is equal to n choose x times the probability raised to the x power times 1 minus the probability raised to the n minus x power, where x is 1 through whatever n is. Um, the experiment has exactly two outcomes, either success or failure. Either it happens or it doesn't happen. The probability of your success, that's what we're calling p here, the probability of your failure, since there's only two possibilities, it would be one minus whatever the probability of the success is. The way we say this verbally is x is distributed binomial with parameters n, which is how many trials you have, and p to the n power, where p again is your probability of success. The notation that we use is x with this little tilde, b for binomial distribution, n, again number of trials, p, probability of success. Um, the mean or the expected value is e of x is equal to the number of trials times whatever your probability is. And then the variance is n times p times 1 minus p. So your expected value times the probability that it doesn't happen. So this first example says you have a multiple choice quiz that has six questions, each of which has four equally likely options, A, B, C, or D. If all the answers are guessed at random, and if X represents the number of correct answers, we're going to find these probabilities. So first, I'm going to write out the notation here. X is distributed binomially with six trials, N is six, and the probability of success, since there's four possible outcomes, it would be one out of four. So X is distributed binomial, with binomial with six trials and a probability of one-fourth. So this first one here, we want to find the probability that x is equal to two, which means that we find two out of the six answers are correct. So we're going to use our graphing calculator. The way we're going to use our graphing calculator is we're going to go into second variables, which is our distributions, and we're going to go to A, which is binomial PDF. So whenever you want to have like an exact value, like this first one, where you want to know exactly two, that is the PDF. Trials is whatever your n value is, so in this case our trials would be 6. P is whatever your probability is, which in this case is 1 fourth. And then X is just whatever you want your X value to be, which in this case is 2. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can get the probability that X is equal to 2. 
So using your graphing calculator, follow these steps, you should end up with the probability that x equals 2 is 0 0.297. So there's just slightly less than a 30% chance on a six question multiple choice test, you will get exactly two of them right. For the next one, it says find the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So that means that you're getting at most 2 right, so 0, 1, or 2. There's two ways you can do this. The first way is exactly what I just said, and that's adding up the three individual probabilities, the probability that x is 0, 1, and 2. Or you can use your graphing calculator to find a cumulative PDF or a cumulative DF um, distribution function. So instead of going to A, PDF, you would go to B, which is CDF, cumulative, because it's more than one. It only works for when you have X is less than or equal to a specific number. Um, so either way, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find the probability that X is less than or equal to two. So I did it the second way. I did the cumulative value here. So I went to second VARS and then B binomial CDF six trials, a probability of 0.25, and my x value was 2, and you should end up with 0 0.831, which is exactly the same thing you would have ended up with if you had added the three of them up. So now, if you have something like C where it says x is less than 2, you can't use the cumulative value just straight um, because you don't want to include 2. So there's a few different ways you can do it. You can either do it like this one here where you do x equals 0 and x equals 1, or we found x equals 2 and we found x is less than or equal to 2, so then you could use both of those to help you find x is less than 2. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out what the probability that you get up to 2 correct. So the way that I did C is because we already did A and B, we did less than or equal to and equal to, I just subtracted out the equals 2 from the less than or equal to 2. Um, so 0 0.831 minus 0 0.297. So the probability that you have 0 or 1 or less than 2 would be 0 0.534. So for the last one, part D, we want the probability that 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 6. So we have at least 3 correct, but no more than or up to but not including 6. So given all the ones that we've done so far, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out the probability that 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 6. So the way that I did it is if you have the probability is 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 6, because we're only talking about integers here, that's the same thing as saying the probability of 3 less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5 which I then said, okay, that's the same thing as I want everything less than or equal to 5 except what's less than or equal to 2. So I did the probability that x is less than or equal to 5 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So I did this in my graphing calculator and I got 0 0.9998. I did it the way the cumulative over here. And then I subtracted what we got in part B for the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So the probability that you get 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 6, is 0 0.169. So there's about a 17% chance that you'll get at least three answers correct, but no more than five answers. For this next example, we want to look at these four situations that they give us and decide whether or not the random variable is distributed binomially, and if so, to find the probability that it asks for. So remember binomial distributions, the trials are all independent, and there's only two outcomes, success or failure. So if we look at this first one, it says a coin is biased so that the probability of a head is 0 0.74, and the coin is tossed seven times. A is the probability of tails. So find the probability that A equals five. Well, flipping a coin are independent. If I flip a head on the first one, it's not gonna affect whether or not I flip a head on the second one. So therefore, this is binomial in the sense that it has independent trials. And then it is binomial also in the sense that it only has a success Either you flip a head, or in this case, excuse me, flip a tail, or a failure, you don't flip a tail. So in this case, this event A is in fact binomial, so I'm going to write out my distribution here. A is distributed binomially, and there are seven trials because we're flipping the coin seven times, and we want the probability that it's a tail, so that's going to be 1 minus 0.74, so the probability of success is 0.26. So since we do know it's in fact binomial, go ahead and pause the video and find this probability. So using your graphing calculator, we want binomial PDF because we're looking at one specific value. So the probability that A is equal to 5 is 0 0.0137. So go ahead and pause the video and do the same thing for B through D. 
So for B, you have a bag that contains 12 white chocolates and seven dark chocolates. You're selecting one at random, you're looking at it, and then you're eating it, and it's repeated five times. Um, this is not a binomial distribution because the trials aren't independent. Since you're eating the chocolate, it's changing the probability of the next trial, so they're not independent trials. For C, you have a bag that contains 10 red dice, one blue die, and seven yellow dice. I noticed I spelled those wrong. A die is selected at random and its color is noted and then replaced. This is repeated 12 times. And C is the number of yellow dice recorded. We want to find the probability that C is less than or equal to six. So because we're replacing the dice, it's not changing the uh, probabilities for every trial. So they are independent trials. And then we're only looking at yellow dice so success if you get a yellow die, it's failure if you don't. So yes, this is a binomial distribution where C is binomially distributed, distributed with 12 trials and a probability of 7 out of 18. So then using your binomial CDF, you have the probability that C is less than or equal to 6 is 0 0.861. And then for the last one, CRN is playing the lottery, the probability of buying a winning lottery ticket is 0 0.001, and she buys, and, or he buys, excuse me, until he wins a prize. So no, this is not a binomial distribution because there's not a fixed number of trials. He's just going until he wins. And it's also not independent because the outcome of each lottery ticket is going to depend on whether or not he buys another lottery ticket. So for this next example, it says, in a family of six children, find the probability that there are exactly three girls and find the probability that there are exactly three consecutive girls born. So go ahead and pause the video and try this first one. So the first part is a binomial distribution. We're going to assume that the um, probability of a girl and a boy is equal, so it's a success or failure here with six trials. So the probability that you have exactly three girls, I'm going to use the binomial distribution, the PDF, and you end up with 0 0.3125. For the next one, it's not going to be a binomial distribution. Um, you're just looking at the different ways you can have three consecutive girls. So these are the four different ways you can have three consecutive girls. The probability of w any one of these outcomes is it's an and, 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 and. So it's going to be one half and 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 one half. So it ends up being one half to the sixth power. And there's four ways that can happen. So the probability of three consecutive girls is four times one half to the sixth power, or 0 0.0625. So this next example says that a study shows that 0.9% of the population over 4 million carries a virus. Find the smallest sample from the population so that the probability of the sample having no carriers is less than 0.4. So this is our situation, C, I'm using the variable C for carriers, is distributed binomially, either you are a carrier or you aren't. We don't know how many trials, that's what we're trying to figure out. And then our probability that you are a carrier is 0 0.009. So then we want to find the probability that C is equal to 0, and we want that to be less than 0 0.4. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use our graphing calculator, and the easiest way to do it is to go into y equals, and under y1, you're going to put in your binomial PDF. So just like we did up here, except for since we're trying to find the number of trials, you're going to make that be the variable x. So where it says n, number of trials, you're going to make that be the variable x. Once you have that inserted with the correct probability and the correct x value, then you're going to go to second graph, which is table, and it's going to give you x, which is going to be our in, our trials, and y, which is going to be our probability function. So we want to scroll until we find our probability is less than 0 0.4. So if you do this, you should end up with 102 for our number of trials. Um, that's the first time that our probability gets below 0 0.4. It's 0 0.3977. So given this situation, if we want a sample from the population where the probability of having no carriers is less than 0.4, we should have a, a sample of 102 people. So for this last example, it says two machines in a light bulb factory are being inspected because quality control raised some concerns. Managers have found that the probability that the first machine produces a defective light bulb is 0 0.3, and the probability that the second machine produces a defective light bulb is 0 0.2. Inspectors take a sample of six light bulbs from the first machine and five light bulbs from the second, and use Y is distributed binomially 
excuse me, x is distributed binomially with six trials and a probability of 0 0.3, and y is distributed binomial with five trials and a probability of 0 0.2 to model these defective light bulbs. So we want to compare and contrast the central tendency and the spread of these binomial distributions. So remember, central tendency are your means, which is the same thing as finding your expected value. And spread is the same thing as how spread out it is, usually your range or your standard deviation, or in this case, your variance, which is your standard deviation squared. So on one of the previous slides, we talked about how to calculate expected value and variance for binomial distribution. So go ahead and pause the video and do that, and then compare and contrast them. So for the first one here, the expected value for binomial distributions, you just multiply, just like all the expected values, how many trials times what the probability is. So in this case, 6 times 0 0.3, your expected value would be 1.8 defective light bulbs. And then the next one for the variance, it's the number of trials times the probability times 1 minus the probability. Um, so you end up with 6 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, which is 1.26. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and do the same thing for y. So for y, the expected value is 5 times 0.2, or 1. So out of 5 trials, you would expect 1 to be defective. And the variance is 5 times 0.2 times 0.8, which is 0.8. So given this information, that means that x has a higher expected value. You'd expect more um, defective light bulbs out of that situation, but it also has a higher variability because the variance is higher, which means there's a larger range of possible outcomes. So this has been binomial distributions. You have a success or a failure within n number of set independent trials.